Well, extraordinary stuff, and it's made headlines, of course, around the entire world. I've never had so many calls and texts and messages and emails asking for interviews or just commenting. Um, well, and this morning, in his first public appearance since the interview, Cristiano said he won't be silenced. In my life, the best timing is always my timing. Obviously, on your side, it's easy to give an opinion. It's easy to write many times the truth, many lies about me. The best timing is always my timing. Well, we can all have our view about how Cristiano Ronaldo might be feeling, why he did this, but sometimes the best people to ask are those who've been in the cauldron of high-level sport. Kevin Peterson is, for me, the best England batsman of his generation, but his international career for England was cut short after a high-profile fallout with his employers, the ECB, and he joins me now. Kevin, great to see you. Thanks when you me. when you watched it, what did you make of Ronaldo's mindset? Why he did this? Mm. What may have been behind it? I think he's at the end of his tether. Um, I think if you read the reports and you, you see why he's been in the news and how many times he's been in the news, uh, for all the wrong reasons by him, but all the right reasons by clearly his employees. Uh, and these things happen to people for reasons that they don't want. And uh, it's... When I was watching, I mean, I just got back from Dubai yesterday and, and I got up every morning and I just watched it. I was one of your 15 million that Thank watched you, the Kevin. full interview. <laughs> I, I didn't watch you, I, I watched him, Piers. Uh, and it, it, was, it, was, it was incredibly what enlightening. You laughing at? <laughs> it, it was incredibly enlightening because you can sort of see a similar position to what I had. Now, mm. not for any stretch of the imagination am I sitting here saying that I'm as famous as Cristiano Ronaldo because it's absolutely not true. You just talked about how famous he is. But what you could see is that actually he's very unhappy in a place that he should be happy. And feels disrespected. There, well, forget disrespect. I hate the word disrespect. There are two places when you are in the cauldron and you are a top, lead, a top uh, athlete mm. and you're right at the top of your game where you should feel happy, you should feel comfortable and you should be able to do whatever you want because that's where you should be free. That's at home with your family. And the second place is at the training ground. Mm. You can see he's unhappy at the training ground. Mm. Now, I know that Carrington, and I think it's called Carrington, mm. where Man United tra uh, trains, their facility isn't up to scratch. No. Have a look at his social media and look where he trains. Look how he practices. Mm. To be the best, you have to live the best life. And to be the best, you have to continually need to grow. And we all talk about being that high-level athlete, it's that extra 1%. What is it like? I, mean, I remember this with you when you were going through your problems with England. We spoke a lot over that time. And the thing that really incensed you was all this drip, drip, drip of stuff that was coming out mm. about you, most of which I knew wasn't true because you were telling me the reality. Cristiano, the same thing. It's yeah. the constant drip, drip, drip of negative stories about him, 95% of which he says are completely untrue. I've been talking to him regularly for six yeah. months. Yeah through this process, and I, I know when I fact-check these things in real time, he said it's not true, it's not true, it's not true, or one is true or whatever. It's, well, it's well, the constant you, well, you, overriding you know. negativity. Well, you know, you've been editor of newspapers, mm. you've been in the media, there are stories that get drip-fed to journalists yes. about certain people... people who want to knife them. ..who yeah. want to knife certain athletes. And mm. one thing I hate is that tall poppy syndrome. I mean, why can't he be celebrated here? I mean, I was in Dubai now, I got back yesterday, and... No one can believe how this country are going after Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. They cannot believe it. The people in the airports, in, in the hotels, everybody... Yeah, he's a god over Why there, yeah. on earth are people going at him? I mean, he is such a proven performer. But you can see his frustration and you can, mm. and you can identify the issues. He goes back to a facility that's not up to scratch. Yeah. He goes to a facility where he wants to be the best, where he wants to maintain standards. You say you don't like the word disrespect. I mean, he used that a lot because he feels that if you're not respected for what you've achieved in the game... And he still believes he has a lot to offer. He's super fit, as you know. You were very fit, mm. actually, when you left the England. So you could have played for another five, six years. He thinks he's got another two or three years at least. He felt there was a, just a disrespect from everyone there that had decision-making power. Yeah, well, I, I think that he is at that level where he commands respect because of what he's achieved in the game. I do, I agree with you. I think he's the greatest footballer that's played the game. Mm. He's, he, 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 he turns the needle. That's what he does. And there's a reason why he's still making headlines four or five days after the interview because of who he is. Mm. There's not many athletes in the world no. that can do that. All right. And so there's a reason also why he's in that position because of the way that he practices, because of the way that he lives his life, because of the sacrifices that he's had to make mm. as an individual 
to achieve what he's achieved. You understand that. I mean, I know that you, you know, for all your obvious many faults... uh, (laughs) Not as many as you. (laughs) But for all your many faults, uh, everyone... We've got one big fault. We've chosen you. (laughs) (laughs) But even if your colleagues, you know, had a problem with you personally, whatever, they all said the same thing. You were the first in and and last out of training. Ronaldo the same. You never hear anything about his training regime. He's unbelievably self-driven. And you had that as well, whilst having this polarising reputation about it. Do you, do you relate to him on that level? Well, I, I think it's it's those one percenters. And, and to be the best, mm. you you have to tick every single box. Mm. And, uh, I, and I'll go back to it. You have to be happy at home where he is, um, but where he also hasn't been over the last six months. I mean, you're only... Well, the two as, things came listen, together because he lost, he lost his baby you're only son. As, you're, as a parent, you're yeah. only as happy as your unhappiest child. Right. And I... Well, he went, through, he went through total tragedy. Exactly right, yeah. exactly right. And, and, and you know what? If what he said is true about mm. them not believing mm. what's been happening with his family, and I can't say whether it's true or mm. not, he says it is true, that's almost unforgivable. Yeah. Because he's a human at the end of the day. Yes, he's super famous. Yes, he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. He's achieved it because he's amazing at what he does. He plays the what biggest you, game in the What did you think sport. of the particular point he made on the field? when Ten Hag, the new coach, doesn't bring him on against Manchester City and says he did so out of respect, and then the next game they're winning easily against Tottenham and he wants to bring him on with three minutes to go, completely contradicting what he'd said the week before. I I, I think, and and my football knowledge isn't amazing, but I think there was a quote from Ten Hag talking about the fact that he was the fourth in line to captain United Mm. a couple of days or a couple of games after... um, Mm his issue where he walked off the field. It's something that even if you think it as a coach, you you don't don't say it it in public. Mm. And that's what I can't understand. Now, that's why I actually agree with everything that Cristiano has said, purely based on the fact that no coach, if he cares about his player, would do that. I agree. Mourinho, why was Mourinho amazing? Mm. Why did Lampard, Terry, Drogba, all these guys... I mean, I did all my rehab for my Achilles Mm. at uh, um, uh, Cobham, at Chelsea's training ground. Why did they love Mourinho? If the team had a bad game, Mourinho made the game about well, Ferguson, himself. Ferguson took it was all the same. On himself. Wenger was the same. All yeah. the great managers, I think, protect their players. You've and got don't to protect your players. 